Did I ever tell you how lucky you are by Dr. Seuss? When I was quite young and quite small for my size, I met an old man in the desert of Dries, and he sang me a song I will never forget. At least, well, I haven't forgotten it yet. He sat in a terribly prickly place, but he sang with a sunny, sweet smile on his face. When you think things are bad, when you feel sour and blue, when you start to get mad, you should do what I do. Just tell yourself, Ducky, you're really quite lucky. Some people are much more, oh, ever so much more, oh, muchly, much, much more unlucky than you. Be glad you don't work on the Bungle Bung Bridge that they're building across Boober Bay at Bum Ridge. It's a troublesome world. All the people who are in it are troubled with troubles almost every minute. You ought to be thankful a whole heaping lot for the places and people you're lucky you're not. Just suppose, for example, you lived in Gazate and got caught in the traffic on Zate Highway 8. Or suppose, just for instance, you lived in Gazar with your bedroom up here and your bathroom up there. Well, clearly I mispronounced Gazare. There's his bedroom. And then there's his bathroom. Suppose, just suppose, you were poor Herbie Hart who had taken his thrum dim bu later apart. He never will get it together, I'm sure. He never will know if the gick or the gore fits with the scrux or the snucks or the snore. Yes, ducky, you're lucky you're not Herbie Hart who has taken his thrum dim bu later apart. Think they work you hard? Think of poor Ali Sard, who has to mow grass in his uncle's backyard, and it's quick-growing grass, and it grows as, it mow as he mows it. The faster he mows it, the faster he grows it, and all that his stingy old uncle will pay for his shoving that mower around in the hay is a piffless pay of two duclas a day, and Ali can't live on such piffless pay. So... He has to paint flagpoles on Sundays in grooves. How lucky you are you don't live in his shoes. And poor Mr. Bix, every morning at six, poor Mr. Bix has his borfin to fix. It doesn't seem fair, it just doesn't seem right, but his borfin just seems to go schlump every night. It schlumps in a heap, sadly needing repair. Bix figures it's due to the local night air. It takes him all day to unschlump it, and then the night air comes back and it schlumps once again. So don't you feel blue. Don't get down in the dumps. You're lucky you don't have a borfin that schlumps. And while we are at it, consider the schlots the crumple-horned, web-footed, green-bearded schlots, whose tail is entangled in unsolvable knots. If he isn't muchly more worse off than you, I'll eat my umbrella. That's just what I'll do. And you're lucky indeed you don't ride on a camel. To ride on a camel, you sit on its whammel. A whammel, you know, is a sort of a saddle held on by a button that's known as a faddle. And boy, if your old whammel faddle gets loose, I'm telling you, ducky, you're gone like a goose. Uh oh. And poor Mr. Potter, tea crosser, I daughter. He has to cross T's, he has to dot I's in an I and T factory out in Van Nuys. Oh, 
Oh, the jobs people work at out west near Hotch Hotch. There's a Hotch Hotcher bee watcher. His job is to watch, is to keep both his eyes on the lazy town bee. A bee that is watched will work harder, you see. Well, he watched and he watched, but in spite of his watch, that bee didn't work any harder, not much. So then somebody said, our old bee watcher man just isn't bee watching as hard as he can. He ought to be watched by another hotch hotcher. The thing that we need is a bee watcher watcher. Well, the bee watcher watcher watched the bee watcher. He didn't watch well, so another hotch hotcher had to come in as a watch watcher watcher. And today all the hotchers who live in hotch hotch are watching on watching, watching, watcher, watch, watch. Watch watching the watcher who's watching that bee. You're not a hotch hot watcher. You're lucky, you see. Goodness. And how fortunate you're not, Professor Debris, who has spent the past 32 years, if you please, trying to teach Irish ducks how to read Javinese. I don't know how to read Javinese. And think of the poor puffing Pugglehorn players who have to parade down the Pugglehorn stairs every morning to wake up the Prince of Pooboken. It's awful how often their Pugglehorns get broken. And oh, just suppose you were poor Harry Haddo. Try as he will, he can't make any shadow. He thinks that perhaps something's wrong with his giz. And I think, by golly, there probably is. He's got no shadow. And the brother's bazoo, the poor brother's bazoo. Suppose your hair grew like theirs happened to do. You think you're unlucky, I'm telling you, ducky. Some people are muchly, oh, ever so muchly, muchly, more, more, more unlucky than you. And suppose that you lived in that forest in France where the average young person just hasn't a chance to escape from the perilous pants-eating plants. But your pants are safe. You're a fortunate guy. And you ought to be shouting, how lucky am I? Ooh, <laughs> lost his pants. And speaking of plants, you should be greatly gladish. You're not Farmer Frankelberg's 17th radish. I believe it's going to get eaten by a worm. And you're so, so lucky you're not Gucky Gown, who lives by himself 90 miles out of town in the ruins of Ronk. Ronk is uh, rather run down. And you're so, so, so lucky you're not a left sock left behind by mistake in the caverns of Croc. Thank goodness for all of the things you are not. Thank goodness you're not something someone forgot and left all alone in some punkerish place like a rusty tin coat hanger hanging in space. That's why I say, ducky, don't grumble, don't stew. Some critters are much, much, oh, ever so much, much, so muchly, much, much more unlucky than you. Good night. I love you.